Hi, Chow. Hi, Candace. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Dee Dee. Hi, Susie. Susie, I love when you put hello from Illinois like on everything. I know that it's you. Hello from Illinois. It's Susie. Stacy's driving. Um, let me guess. Chick-fil-A. Oh, Arby's. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Cheryl from Texas. Hi, Angie. Hi, Gilly. Hi, Carmen. Hello, everybody. I finally have been getting some of my packages. Three more packages showed up today. I am now waiting for one, two, three, four, five, six packages. So it's moving along. Although I will say all the packages that came today were all UPS packages. So if you want to send me something, UPS is the best way. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Carmen. <laughs> Stacy, you're driving. Stop texting. All right, so this is a watercolor book from Arteza. I use this to swatch out all of my fun Arteza products. Arteza, however you want to say it. Tomato, tomato. Um, hi, Margaret. Hi, Lisa. And I just purchased... The Arteza Iridescent Colors Acrylic Paints Idea for Crafts and uh, Arts and Crafts, it says. Okay, so we're going to go to this page here. There's only 10 of them right now, but that's okay. Let me just draw out my little swatchy swatch here. swatch out a lot but I like to keep all their stuff swatched out because all of their stuff usually matches so if I'm combining you know watercolors with pencils or color pencils or watercolor pencils or markers or whatever everything does seem to be pretty consistent in lining up in their paint colors so all right so this is Arteza they're calling them iridescent. I'm calling them color shift, and I'll show you why in a second. All right. So when they come around, when they come to you, they do come in a envelope. Um, the paints are all sealed in this box. The box was wrapped in plastic, so they do come nicely sealed. And then each one of these has that plastic lid inside that you have to pull off the top. Um, I did that on all of them. So I've already saved you the hassle of that. The names of the colors are on the top here. And as I swatch them out, I'll tell you the names. And I've already done it on black paper. I do have a little paintbrush with some water. And hello, Lee, darling. Some paper towels next to me here. And we will swatch some of these out. So this one is called Fiery Red. Now, I think on white paper, they just look like whatever color you see on the bottle. And then when you move to dark cardstock or black cardstock, it shifts to a different color. So I'll show you um, those colors here in a second. Right, Lee? I just love that they're inexpensive. I mean, they keep coming out with new ideas all the time, but I just like that they're inexpensive. Oh, I should probably write down what these are. I'm not very good at that part. All 
This one was A703. A702. This one's called Shady Orange. And I believe you can get them almost everywhere except Australia at this time. But you should be able to get them in Canada and in Europe. So I'm sorry for my Australian friends. I don't think you guys can get these yet. I'm sure they will open up their, their ordering system soon. Okay, so acrylic paints are nice because they have a nice sheen to them when they dry. They're pretty permanent. Um, once the color goes down, you don't need to worry about it being uh, water reactive. It's not like gouache or watercolors. Gouache and watercolors are water reactive. So um, what's nice about these paints and why they say they're good for ideals for arts and crafts is they don't smell weird. They go down pretty easily. These are the paints that we use for paint pouring, for everyday painting, um, arts and crafts. I have those wooden, uh, here's one actually next to me, these wooden um, ornaments. Actually, I was just going to paint a couple of these for the kids and do some little hearts and stuff for Valentine's Day. Um, wood slices, I should say. And you don't have to do any sealing once it's done, once it's painted on there. So a very versatile paint. There's no smell if you're somebody who's sensitive to smell. Um, and then, like I said, there's a little bit of a sheen. So it doesn't dry matte. It drives with a little bit of a sheen to them. Lee says he uses them on his 3D printing. Yeah, um, it's just a very easy paint to work with. If you have a little bit of a mess, um, it's very easy to clean up with water while it's still wet. And then once it's dry, it's pretty permanent. Ooh, I like the name of this one, Fairy Tale Blue. It's like a periwinkle kind of blue. So obviously the, the more you water it down, the more translucent it's going to be. The thicker you put it down, the more opaque it's going to be. So you have a little bit of flexibility there. And there's only um, 10 colors, so this will not take us very long. This one's called Royal Purple. called Electric Plum Purple. And you can certainly use these paints in paint pouring by just watering them down with a little bit of water and some Floetrol. Floetrol is a paint extender. You can get it from your hardware store. Of course, you can buy um, paint uh, pouring mediums, but they are a little bit more expensive. You can get Floetrol for very inexpensive at the hardware store. You can buy a big, big bucket of it, or you can get a little a jar of it. It'll last you quite a long time, but it's, um, it's way less expensive but, than buying the Liquitex uh, paint medium, flow, flow medium. Um, and all it does is it just extends the paint so that the paint, it goes into a more liquid format so that you get your paint pouring because that's the whole point of paint pouring is that it's, you know, drippy paint without you losing any of the color consistency in the paint and without um, causing the paint to crack. Because if you just put water in your paint, your paint is going to lose, it's going to get diluted and it's going to lose some of its color, but also it could cause the paint to crack. Um... They have a term for that. I can't think of the name off my head. Crazing. That's what it's called. Crazing. Which means that your paint is basically, it's cracking. Um, A701. So I like buying inexpensive acrylic paints to do my paint pouring with. Does not have to be anything uber expensive. I know there's a lot of expensive brands out there. But again, they are taking advantage of paint pouring being a super hot trend. And, uh, you know, so if they can mark the paint up of course they're going to make the paint mark the paint up but that's why i like the arteza brand because you don't have to spend a lot of money to get good products with arteza
Okay, so the pink is called Glowing Peach. The black is called Fancy Black. And the white is called Playful Pink. And you'll see why in a moment here. I have way too much of that peach here. It's called peach, but it's really pink. Way too much of that. Fancy black. It's kind of like my sweater today, my fancy black sweater. All right, and then this is the white, which again, looks white. All right, so that's what they look like on white. So if you're just looking for regular acrylic paints, they're pretty. They have a little bit as they dry. Like I said, there's a little bit of a gloss to them. It's not super glossy, but they're not a flat paint. Um, and then you'll want to see where the magic is, is on black. So here they are on black, and you can see quite a difference here. I'll try to match up the colors. So this is, let me write this down with my own pen. This is the, um, let me do these in order. This is the playful pink. So you can see it's white on white cardstock, and then it does go to pink on the black cardstock. I know that one is the red. This is the yellow. Now I gotta try to remember what order they were in. Because now they're all drying and I can't remember. This one was the black. Okay, so as I go through, I'll try to point out the differences here. All right, so the first one here, this one was actually white on plain cardstock, and now it's a pink. So you can see that's what they mean by iridescent, or I like to call it color shift. A703 is this bright red, and you can see here it's drying, and you can see some of that red coming through, but it has a little bit of a violet undertone to that. 702 is almost the same, so it's very peachy here and a pink peach here. If you have opal polishes from um, um, Cosmic Shimmer, it's very similar to what they do. Um, A700 is the yellow, which turns into, it's called Dreamy Lemon Yellow. And you can see it has more of a peach color. This is a pink peach. This is an orange peach. This one's very interesting. This is uh, the lime green, and that is called Shocking Lime Green. And it is lime green on white, but it's more of a lemon yellow on the black. 707 is called Fairy Tale Blue, and Fairy Tale Blue goes from blue to purple. Pretty neat. And. 705 is royal purple, and royal purple goes from purple to almost a gold. You see that? 706 is electric plum purple, and electric plum purple goes from purple to a dark blue. Okay, and then 701 is... Oh, I must have dabbed in the pink there. Okay, 701 is pink here, pink here, and it turns to like an electric pink here. Again, more of like that peachy pink. And then the black is black here, and it's still black here, but you can see it kind of has a bronze look to it. So yeah, they all look pretty neat. I dipped in the paint there and smudged it, but you can see what the difference is 
that's where it's fun because if you have like opal polishes and you want to do something on um, black card, you can really make your black card pop by just coloring in with these fun colors. And again, it's acrylic paint, so it's meant to be used as a paint. So it's different from the Arteza Metallics because the Arteza Metallics basically just give a shimmer or shine or a mica to them. They don't actually change colors based on what kind of background they have, where these actually shift colors based on the background. So I just took a little bit of that extra paint there, painted it on here. We'll see how that dries and look at that in a few minutes. The other thing I wanted to compare it to is I already have some color shift paints. These I picked up on sale. I don't know if they still continue these or not. Um, these are folk art paints. But you can see they're the same size. Now, I remember these being a little more expensive. Normally, paint's like a dollar something. And I want to say these were two something a bottle. I'm just shaking them up because they've separated a little bit. But I want to see how these look if I swatch them out, if they're similar, if they're different, um, if they have any different colors. So if you can't get the Artezas, maybe you can find these folk art ones in your craft supply store. So let me try down here. I'm going to try to put them in the same order because they do look very similar to me. Could be the same company. Who knows? <coughs> I didn't see this color, though. This is like a teal color. I did not see that. That's a different one. So these two are kind of odd man out. So we'll separate separately swatch those. Oh, I'm glad you got it, Jerry. No problem. I think you have one more package coming your way, Jerry. Or maybe you already have color shift paints and you want to see... Um, yeah, you know what, guys? These are almost identical. Huh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, this is called Red Flash. I'm going to swatch it over here on here, too. Oh, yeah, it's almost the same color on the black, too. Interesting. See, I like doing these little experiments for you guys. This one's called Orange Flash. Oh, so, so uh, creative with the names there, folk art. Uh, I think these are the same companies, you guys. Uh, Yellow Flash. <laughs> I mean, they seem to be reacting the same way. And I know you guys can't see. I'm off to the side here. I'll try to bring it in so you guys can see a little better. I'm swatching them down here. Look, they're almost identical to the colors I'm comparing them to. Um, green flash. <laughs> you got that right, Noel. I'm trying not to put a big blob of paint down. Ooh, probably had too much water on my brush there. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a lime yellow. Let me 
dry my brush off a little bit. Okay, this one goes down here. This one looks a little different. Blue flash. I don't know that it looks like. Oh, I guess it does. Fairy tale blue and blue flash do kind of look the same. It's a little different, but I don't think it's too different. They're close enough. Oh, almost washed it. They definitely both are purple when they're on black paper, too. I'm going to put this teal one down here in the corner by itself. Hi, Kay. So this one's called Aqua Flash. Oh, wow. So we don't have that one in the Arteza brand, Arteza brand. Ooh, that's really pretty on black paper. It's a super bright blue. Here it is. It's pretty. Okay, and then this is Blue Violet Flash. <laughs> Which looks the same as the purple. Yep, they're the same. And then this one we don't have, we'll put this one off to the side too, Pink Flash. which is, of course, Nancy's favorite color. Oh, I forgot to do the purple flash, but that's okay. And I have a feeling this probably shifts to like a peachy. Oh, it's like a, a purple. It shifts to a purple. All right, so if you have all but these two colors in the color shift paints, now I don't know how many are in this collection. I have two, four, six, eight of them, but the teal and the pink flash are different in the folk art paint. And then in Arteza, you get an additional, um, what do we get here? You get an electric plum. Glowing Peach, Fancy Black, and Playful Pink. So you get those additional colors in the Arteza. But the rest, they're pretty close. They are pretty close. I would say these four are actually identical. The blue is a little different, and this one is identical. So, ah, oh, look at Chow. Chow put a coupon up there for you guys. Um, so these are called, again, the Arteza iridescent acrylic color so there's 10 of them so they're not just like regular acrylic paints the fun in these is that they have that color shift property so if you wanted to use them on white paper they look like regular colors but then when you put them on black you can see here is where the fun is and again if you want to do anything with like embossing folders things like that um, that's really where these will stand out. If you do anything in black or there's some layering, it'll show a couple of different colors there. I have a piece of black here. I don't know if the paint's going to stick to it, but let's try it. I mean, it should stick. It's acrylic paint. For those of you that do painting or do mixed media or, like I said, paint pouring, this will be really cool on. 
but you can already see this is yellow and it has like a peach undertone to it. So as it's drying, I can see where there's thicker parts of paint is yellow and where there are thinner areas of paint, it's turning peach. And this is a glossy piece of card. This, is, this has been one that I've kind of foiled on and everything else, but you can see how fun that is doing that. And like I said, if you have any of these Arteza craft um, wood blocks, wood, wood chips, Chow is awesome. Hi, Sally. You didn't miss too much, Sally. I'm just swatching out some Arteza color shift paints here. in dries pretty quickly it's already set once I let it dry so you don't have to put anything extra over this to protect it not like I said not like watercolors or like wash so I like having these kinds of things around because you're always looking for stuff to do with the kids or with the grandkids or little chipboard pieces that we're putting on our cards or our scrapbook pieces. And these little um, these little wooden ornaments, they sent me a whole box of them. You guys, I used them for Thanksgiving. I used them for Halloween. I used them for Christmas. I still have plenty left that I can make little hearts for the kids. They come with little twine strings. I just have to tie it up there. Melissa, I don't believe so. You got to do that quick, though. So, Marie, the co color shift means it's one color on white paper, and it's a different color on dark paper. So, I'll show you guys the swatches again here. And I'm, it's coming right off of my fingers, so it's very easy to clean up. I don't need any special chemicals. It doesn't smell. I know a lot of you guys are sensitive to smells, or you have you know, pets or children in the house. And so you don't have to worry about this is non-toxic. It's very easy to clean up. Even though it is a water-based paint, it's not going to come off like a watercolor does. So very fun paint. So just to show you, this is what it looks like when they swatch out on white card or white paper or white product. You can see it's pretty true to its color there. And then when you go to a dark card, and this is the Arteza black, um, this is their black sketch pad I'm using, so you can see there, okay? So I swatch out my other stuff on there. So here you can see how those same bright, vibrant colors there on white have now switched the way they look on black. So here is the white. It doesn't look white anymore, it looks pink. So that's a lot of fun. I'm sorry, here's the white, it looks pink. But that's a lot of fun to have kind of dual purpose, dual personalities in the paint. They're kind of like, where's Ryan at? They're kind of like Geminis. So um, you can definitely paint on paper with this. You can paint on watercolor cardstock. You can paint on your craft projects. Leah was just painting on a can. She got cookies in, like a tin can. But she got cookies in. She was painting all over that. So think about the creativity. My thought was to use them in paint pouring. If you have a black base on your paint pouring, it's going to show up a different color than it is on your white for paint pouring, but that's a lot of fun. A lot of brightness there. It almost kind of pops like it's metallic or neon, but it's just the way that they put that second hidden color in there. Um, so here you can see I painted this on and you can see that shimmer in there as that second color pops. So that was pink, and now you can see it's kind of peachy when it pops. So it's a lot of fun. Just wanted to show you guys what they look like. Let me see if I can do a...
So this one, as you can see, is white. On white card, you can't see it, it's white, but then as soon as I go onto the black card, it's a very light pink. Here is one that is a light pink. This is called the Glowing Peach, and you'll see that it is light pink on the black card, and, or on the white card, and as soon as it touches the black, it goes to a peach. This one is called Electric Plum Purple. I think I'm going to get my nails done this color. Okay, so it'll be purple on the white card. Tracy's favorite color, purple. And then as we go over here, it's kind of a bluish purple. The blue really comes out. Almost like, to me, I just, I want to call it ultraviolet because that's what it looks like to me. Here is royal purple. So again, it will come out purple here. And it's got like a gold color on here, on the black. It is like magic. It's so fun. I like this lime green one. Let's do this one again. Okay, so this one is shocking lime green. And it is definitely lime green on the white. And then it turns lemon yellow on the black. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Let's try this one. Fiery red. So fiery red, it's definitely red, and then it turns pink. And then obviously once these dry, you're going to have more of the color saturation come through versus when they're wet. Oh, sorry. Can you see it now, Bonnie? Will it work on black and white print? That's a good question, Candace. Let me grab a black and white piece of paper. Hold on. Let me move this out of the way. All right, this is a piece of Catherine Puller Slimline black and white print paper. Uh, this paper doesn't foil so well, just so you guys know. It does foil, but it's very distressed looking when it foils. Let me see. 
see. We want one that really contrasts. Let's see. one of these purples. This one is electric plum purple. So I'll paint a piece of it and then I'll dry it and we'll see how it looks when it's dried. Well, the, the white definitely takes the purple, no problem. All right, let me take the heat tool to it. Actually, we'll do a couple different colors and see how they look. Hello, creative touches. This one's called Shady Orange. just playing with some new paints. Oh, I definitely see it on this one. That went right to orange on the black. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. So this is the yellow, and it has a peach undertone, and I can see that peach right away on the black. I mean, you see the yellow, obviously, but definitely can see the peach coming through on the black. That's pretty cool. And it's starting to tra transfer over here on this side, too. Oops, too much paint. Way too much paint. All right, I'm gonna take the heat tool and dry it off real quick. Pretty dry, it doesn't take long to dry. Okay, so I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. Definitely can see the difference the thicker you put the paint. Like I had a lot of paint here. You can see how much coverage there is. It becomes more opaque versus watering it down. Like I have these two. I had a lot of water on my paint, so they're watered down. It's less opaque, but it's pretty shiny. It's very pretty in terms of the colors. It is called iridescent colors, but you can see on the black that it's not just black. You can see the color coming through. Like this one, you can see that that is definitely peachy. This is uh, more of a lemon yellow on there. So the, the white parts are green and the black parts are yellow. You have yellow squares here and then the black parts 
it's peachy orange. There we go. So you can see that. You can see over here that it's bluish. Um, it's purple and blue, depending on which one you're looking at. If you're looking at the white, it looks blue. If you look at the black, it looks purpley. So that is pretty neat. I didn't know how it was going to show up on pattern paper, but now I'm really glad I did that because that looks cool. I just want to do that all day. Just play with it and do that. <laughs> it's fun. It really is. So it gives you a way to kind of transform something you have that may not be, uh, you know, what you want it to be and just give it a little bit of pizzazz and have fun with it. And again, these are the Arteza 10 acrylic colors. They're iridescent. Um, like I said, they, they're, I call them color shift. Very comparable to the folk art color shifts if you can find them. For some reason, I think that they were sold out um, because I haven't been able to see them in a while. And I was able to pick up eight colors of those. But this gives you 10 colors. The colors are listed on the top and it shows you here what it switches to. Um, and all I did was just go through and swatch them out for you guys. Chow did link the Arteza link. If you can use my affiliate link, I really appreciate that. And I have a 15% off coupon for you guys if you want to check them out. And I'll show you again the swatches we started out with were these coming in the white. So when you swatch it out on white, it looks like a regular acrylic paint. It's a lot of fun. And acrylic paints are these don't smell they're non-toxic they're great for arts and crafts so here's one i did on those little wooden um ornaments that you can also get from arteza i also do paint pouring with these you just um use some flow trawl to thin the paint out so that it pushes the paint around pretty easily it dries very quickly there is a little bit of a sheen when it dries so you really don't need to coat it if you wanted to put some kind of a clear lacquer over it you could but once um acrylic paint is dried there's really nothing else you need to do with it uh not like a watercolor paint or a gouache where you need to to seal it um, yes, yes, Jan, they're very much like the opal polishes, but these are paint. And then you can see when they're on dark cardstock, how the color shifts. So this was the white and it went from white to this light pink. This is the red. It has, um, I want to call it like a strawberry pink. Um, this was the orange that turned peach. This is the yellow that turned orange. This is the lime green that turned yellow. Blue turns purple. I, I like to call this one kind of like ultraviolet. Um, this was a blue and it has a little bit of a gold undertone to it. Purple turned blue. And then we have um, black, which black is the only one that pretty much stayed the same. It just has a little bit of a bronze undertone to it. So a lot of fun colors there. And the only two that they didn't have to match the um, folk art color shift were the teal and the fuchsia so the teal turns blue and the fuchsia turns purple so those will be a nice addition to the collection but you could probably probably mix the colors if you really wanted to get that color i bet you could mix these two colors and get that teal color so a lot of fun just wanted to swatch them out and show you guys what they look like i wanted to compare them to the folk art to see how different or similar they were and they're pretty similar and yeah i think that was a great idea to put that on pattern paper and you can see here, I swatched them out here from their original color on white. I just pulled the brush over and you can see how much that color changes as it switches over from white to black. And then here it is on pattern paper. And there is a shimmer to that. And that's dry, guys. That's not going to come off. So yeah, if you do arts and craftsy stuff, I just thought you guys would like to see what they were. I definitely would recommend them. Um, if you can find these in your stores, um, they're about the same. But I know some people can't, don't have a local store near them. Um, I know that Arteza ships all over the world. I don't think they ship to Australia yet, but I know that they do to uh, Canada and also to Europe. So um, Chow has put on there. 
the links for you guys. Oh, we got our first troll. Oh, so cute. Get a life. <laughs> See, this is why I have admins. Um, but yeah, while you're, if you have not tried Arteza products, I'm going to challenge you this year to try an Arteza product. There's so many of them. I've done so many videos on them. I do love them. I did purchase these paints. They did not send me these paints. I purchased them. They probably didn't send them to me because they are such a hot item. Um, so I wanted to get my hands on. So I did buy these with my own money, but you can still sponsor my affiliate link if you want to try them out. And again, if you're looking for swatch books or watercolor books, um, I do recommend the white watercolor books. I have this one. As you can see, not only have I painted in this one, I have used, um, these are the metallic watercolors. Here are their alcohol markers. Here are their twee markers. Here are their Everblend alcohol markers. Here are their metallic acrylic paints. Here are their colored pencils. Here are their watercolor pencils. So I have swatched out, here's their real brush pens. I've swatched out, um, here are their watercolors or gouache. So I've swatched out everything that I own from them and their colors are pretty comparable, very vibrant, very bright. They have excellent, excellent customer service. But this is a great way to, you know, in the watercolor swatch book to do that and not have to worry about anything kind of bleeding through. I mean, these are sparkle markers that I did. They're not Arteza, but they're sparkle markers and they did not bleed through onto the back sides here. So, or if you're just looking for an art journal, they do sell a smaller one, which is a little bit smaller size and they normally come in a two or three pack. So I have one, Leah has one. And then the black one, I don't recommend this one for water coloring because this paper is not very thick, but um, I've done some swatching out on black here. So here's the Arteza metallic watercolors. Um, here I was comparing them to the fine tech and they're very comparable to the fine tech. And then here's the ones I did. So as long as you're not putting heavy water on the black, it works okay. Here's a, a, a painting I did with the metallic acrylic paints. So the difference between metallic and iridescent is metallic has this sheen to it. Think of micas when you think of metallic. Think of um, pearlescent. So that's the metallics. These are color shifts. So these are actually going to have a different color when you put them down on black paper. They have a little bit of a sheen, but nothing like this where it's very, um, it's not going to be very acrylic, say. Um, but they're great for crafts. So I, I do love my number one go-to watercolor paper is their expert watercolor pad. That is my favorite watercolor paper. It just moves so easily when I'm doing watercoloring with them, whether it's using their paints, the markers, their watercolor pencils. I really like that watercolor pad. It's called the expert watercolor pad. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun playing with these. Just wanted to show you guys what they were all about. I knew somebody somewhere was eventually going to have a question on them, so I thought I would just order them for myself and do a video for you guys. All right. This one of Fofo Food and Richard Hill family, no birthday swap mail yet. Aww. I'm going to try to do more videos for you guys and just kind of using what you have and comparing them to what you may already have. So if you have opal polishes, these are similar to opal polishes. If you have these color shift folk art paints, they're very similar to these guys as well. But I just wanted to give you guys some options in comparing things. And that's all I got. You guys got any questions? Trying to read the comments here. Creative Touches has watercolor markers. Yep. Oh yeah, Kathleen. I do, like, my crafts are not off limits. If I use them for card making, if I use them for crafting, I've done ornaments, I've done these little wooden things. Um, you know, Leah is always, you know, messing around with something creative. We've painted on canvas, we paint... We paint on everything. She was just painting on a cookie can that she emptied and she wanted to make like a pencil holder out of it. So yeah, never, never separate your crafts from, you know, this is only for painting or this is only for, you, you can use them usually cross, crossing between crafts. 
Yes. Um, Creative Touches has a foiling question. Okay, go ahead. Arteza acrylics and gouaches are my paints of choice. I've been for a few years. Absolutely, Matt. Yeah, Arteza acrylics and gouache are very similar. The um, the gouache is nice because it has a little bit more of a water based. Um, option the more water you add the more watercolor it's going to come out the thicker you leave the gouache the more like acrylics is going to come out a little more opaque a little thicker but yes i do love their paints as well um stacy's asking what's happening this weekend do i have a hot date this weekend or something stacy did you hook me up with somebody <laughs> i've been looking over your foil videos while i've been on vacation oh great leanne Oh, Sandy answered the question. Stamp with me. Can you foil on colored paper? Absolutely creative touches. So there are two ways that you can foil on colored paper. Um, I would recommend hot foiling. And hot foiling is going to give you some results. I showed these on our Facebook page yesterday. If you were on our Facebook page, if not, join Foiling Snobs Club. So these are some hot foil samples I've made. This is on alcohol um, cardstock that I made. I decorated with alcohol cardstock. Um, this is on some black cardstock. And these are, this is all hot foiled on here. But you can do this on, you know, any color paper you want. Black, white, red, orange, yellow, polka dot pattern. Whatever you want to do, you can do hot foiling on any color. Okay, pattern papers. Yeah, Tracy did hers on pattern papers. Um, so you can do that on any color. Now, in terms of toner foiling where you print it out, that is a little more difficult, but it can be done if you can find a super smooth paper. Um, then you can run it through your laser printer, print on it, and then foil on it. Now, I always recommend white paper from... Uh, Hamilco, which is in my Amazon shop. It's super smooth paper, but it prints out these images and then you can foil them yourself. If you're going to do black cardstock, I found a winner with the Hamilco black, or if you're in the UK, the Craft Essentials black card. As far as other colored dark cards, it's kind of difficult because you get a spotty look with the toner because colored cardstock is very porous. And because it's porous to accept the dye, so they take this paper and they dye it, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, whatever, um, it's generally very porous, and because it's porous, it does not accept toner very well in order to foil over it. So if you're going to be foiling on colored cardstock, I would say stick to white or black. Use the recommendations that I made on the videos that I have, um, or you're just going to have to experiment with your other colored cardstock to see how, how they take it. You could use heat and bond, yes. Heat and bond you could use. That's a little trickier though. And the heat and bond does not come out super smooth. There's, You're gonna have a little bit of, um, I call it orange peel because I've been in the car business too long. Um, you're gonna have a little bit of, of bumpiness to that from the heat and bond. It won't be completely smooth. Stacy, he lives in Tucson. Who lives in Tucson? What y'all talking about? Oh, Sandy's brother's coming. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Um, Arteza doesn't have foils yet. If you know something I don't know, Matt, you need to email me because they don't have foils yet. Arteza. Yes, you have to use your foil press. Yes, Creative Touches, get your foil press out. All right, so this Saturday, uh, I would like for you guys to join me here. I do have a hot date. My hot date is with Stacy, Tracy, Ryan, Chow, and the Catherine Puller. So join us right here at 7 p.m. Saturday night. 
Miss Catherine Pooler is going to be coming to join us on what's called Stamp With Me. And you guys requested when we were doing Stamp Wars, hey, we want to know what the stamp set are that you guys are going to be using, and we want to stamp along with you. So this is our first ever Stamp With Me. Um, I don't know if you can expedite order it because shipping is kind of slow right now with the post office, but this is the stamp set we're going to be using with Miss, with Miss Catherine Pooler. It is called the Sincere Thanks Set, and it's going to be live 7 p.m. Eastern right here on my YouTube with the rest of the gang. And instead of it being Stamp Wars, it'll be Stamp With Me. I don't think we'll have any sabotages, but you never know what we're going to throw up there. We're a creative group. But if you have this stamp set, if you purchased it, please join us and we'll see what kind of cards we can all come up with with this stamp set. Oh, yeah, Sherry, if you guess the colors, Catherine's giving away a set of her eight brand new ink pads plus re-inkers on Instagram and on Facebook. Believe me, I have been guessing away. The thank you die is from the Not Too Shabby Shop. We have a link for that and a 10% coupon. Um, it's originally from My Favorite Things. It is a hot foil stamp. So it won't cut anything out. It'll just hot foil stamp it for you. So you put this in your hot foiling machine, either your Gemini um, foil press, your Go Press and Foil, your Spellbinders Glimmer. And when it's nice and hot, you run it through your die cutting machine. And all of that beautiful foil, as long as it's hot foil, will transfer over. Um, so get that from the Not Too Shabby Shop. Chow has linked the link for you guys, and there's a discount code there. You'll get 10% off of your order. And she has happy birthday and thank you for hot foil stamps. Yep. Yes, you can use those paints on a gel press, Luann. Absolutely. Also, I wanted to let you guys know... I guess forest green on a pink because I didn't realize the frame was the color. That's okay, Sherry. <laughs> also wanted to let you guys know today is the first day you can start ordering from the new Stampin' Up! Spring catalog. Um, if you don't have one, I can PDF it to you. Um, but go check it out. I already have my laundry list of things I'm going to be ordering. I didn't do any pre-orders. Um, I wanted to see what was going to be popular. So... Go check that out. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to help you out with that. Also, Stampin' Up! has changed their white paper. It's no longer Whisper White. It's called Basic White. They've gone with a new manufacturer. So I'm definitely going to be ordering that and trying that out. And I'm also going to be ordering the white pigment ink for all of my design team members so they can be quiet about the best white pigment ink. Because once they try the Stampin' Up! white pigment ink, they will know once and for all that I was right and Stacy was wrong. <laughs> but yeah if you guys don't have a stampin up demonstrator i would love to have you guys order for me um again i'll be posting the code under my nancy stamps page and also foiling snobs club i'll post a hostess code up there so that way um if we get anything extra out of the hostess code what i normally do is i get extra sets so that i can do what with it Give it away to you guys. It's also um, celebration. So if you spend, I believe it's over $50, you can get a incentive item. And if you spend more than $100, you can get two incentive items or one really cool incentive item. So you'll want to go check that out as well if you've never um, seen Stampin' Up! or tried Stampin' Up! Give it a try. I fell in love with their stamps eight years ago, and I'm a hobby demonstrator, which means I don't, I don't push to sell it, as you guys know. I just order what I like, and if you just happen to be somebody who wants to try it out and you would like to order a couple things from me, it helps to keep me in their good graces so they don't drop me, but um, I don't push anybody and send eight million emails and say you have to buy this because it's, it's all just for fun, you guys. <laughs> oh, Christine, we're not going to stop arguing about the white ink. <laughs> 
Cindy says white wars. <laughs> yes, the, the white ink wars. We actually had a draw between Stampin' Up! White Ink and the Hero Arts Unicorn White Ink. Yes. Oh, Christine's going to sign up in the UK. Christine, make sure you hit up Lee, Lee Walker, our UK, because I think he was looking for somebody to get that stuff from. I don't think he has anybody in the UK. So, Christine, if you're going to sign up in the UK, let me know, and I'll make sure that you'll be our UK ambassador for Stampin' Up! This hot foil die is hard to find. Is it in? Is it not in the not-too-shabby shop? Not too shabby shop. I star. I I can tell you that Stacy and I both have ordered a generic ink toner ink off of my Amazon shop. I think it's listed in my Amazon shop, but um, remind me, email me, and I'll send you the link. But I've gone to a generic aftermarket toner and it's worked okay not all aftermarket toners work but the one that stacy rec recommended to me seems to be working fine yep um how can i see the video the white ink video creative touches what is she looking for I missed it. Oh, is she talking about the... I missed it. What's your video on, Kay? I missed that. Sorry. Oh, she used the clear foil. Okay, all right, so I see what you did. I understand what you're saying. She used the clear foil. I'll show you what she did. I just happen to have my hot foil machine right here on the desk because I never put it away. So I'll show you what she meant. It's kind of like this here. Sorry, Arteza, this has now turned into a foiling video. All right, so I'm going to say that I will never buy clear white foil. I think that it is probably a waste of money, and I'll explain to you why. Um... Because all you're doing with clear white foil is making something shiny, okay? If you wanted to do an embossing resist, you can do an embossing resist with clear, um, clear embossing powder. So I really do not see any reason to buy white, or I'm sorry, not white, clear um, foil. All right, now, that being said, Blue Bonnet was very gracious enough and... Crafty Critta in Australia was also gracious enough to send me um, clear foil. Now, clear foil this clear foil that she sent me is holographic foil. Okay, so this is hot. So I, you know, would buy this foil because I can see the, you know, the, the prettiness in this foil, but plain white foil I wouldn't buy. So basically all you do is you hot foil your image. So here I have hot foiled on white cardstock and then I took blue ink blending and I ink blended over it. So now my card is blue, but my foiled image is um, clear. But you can ink blend on any color foil. If you don't like the way something likes something looks, 
You can ink blend right over it, you guys, because the foil will resist it. Hot foiling. Hot foiling is the way to go if you're going to do any kind of foiling on colored cardstock. That's the way to go. It's it's much harder on toner. On toner, um, if you want to do toner foiling with the mink, you can pretty much hot foil on anything, really. Yeah, you can do any foil, any foil on colored cardstock as long as it's hot foil. Yep. Hi, Deborah. Yeah, so what Kay was talking about is if you foil, you can ink blend over that. This is the clear foil. I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't do that unless it was something extra special pretty. Okay. All right, did you guys have any other questions? So all of these thank you cards, I did all of these with the glimmer. I know. did not use the foil press. I used the glimmer on these. They came out beautifully. Okay, so here's something that I foiled the other day. I have all of these things on the desk. We might as well use them. So here's just foil, and then all you're going to do is ink blend around it. Again, with this, you can do with toner foiling or hot foiling because if you print it on white, car on this is the Hamilco paper. If you print this on white, it takes blend, it takes ink blending very easily. It's very smooth paper. So you could make this any color you want, and that's with toner foiling or hot foiling. And then once the ink is on there, you just take a little rag or paper towel and you'll wipe that ink right off of your foiling. And it looks good. So that's how you get whatever color you want. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys got any other questions? Hopefully I clarified that. Ink blending is when you take your ink and you take a blending tool and you can use a brush or you can use your sponge daubers, the distress ones or the scrapbook.com ones. I like the scrapbook.com ones because they're domed. They do make it easier to do ink blending. There's less of a harsh line. Everybody has these brushes now, so you can pick these up anywhere. And you just, again, just grab that ink and blend it into your paper. That's what's called ink blending. The more ink you add, the darker it's going to be. You can always add more ink. You can't take away ink. Look, that's ready for next year's Christmas. I just got to put Merry Christmas on it. Yeah, I did notice that the price of laser printers has coming back down. They're coming back in stock. I think a lot of people have started to go back to work. I think the people that are work from home have now gotten all their work from home supplies. So you can get um, you can get the inexpensive um, 
laser black and white laser printer there's a couple things you want to look for number one does it print on 80 pound or uh, 80 pound cardstock because most of our cardstock is 80 or 100 pounds number two can you do 600 dpi which is dots per inch which is how tight the little droplets of toner are on your printed image you want them to be very smooth so the more droplets there are the better it is think of it like sheet count okay if you sleep on 200 thread count sheets and then you sleep on 1000 thousand thread count sheets there's a humongous difference yes they're both sheets but the softer smoother sheets are the higher number it's the same thing when you're printing so you want something that's 600 dpi or higher black and white is fine you don't need color if you do print in color the foil will stick wherever you print so if you print a colored image don't think the image is only going to stick to the black it will stick to everything um, but it does stick better to the black. But a black and white mono laser printer, you decide if you want it to be... Um you decide if you want it to be Wi-Fi or not. Most people do want Wi-Fi, but it is cheaper if you just do buy yourself a printer co cord and, and make it... Um, hooked up to your computer. So that's up to you guys. Um, it'll save you money if you're okay with the cord. Some people want to put the printer in the other room and they need it wireless and they need it Wi-Fi. You might spend a couple dollars more. The two that are recommended in my group, in my Amazon group and my Facebook group are the Facebook or the Canon, which is the one Stacy uses. It has a front feeder. Um, and then mine is the brother, which has the front front free fl can't speak front feeding, and then it also comes out the back. So that way, um, and mine has a setting called toner fixation, which means that it heats up the toner faster, so it's smoother. So when it comes through out the back of the printer, it's not going to get smudged. Okay. I don't have a colored toner sheet, Deb, but I heard that some people have had good results with that. Yep. Thanks, Christine. Yes, with Distress, actually almost any dye ink, you can get that result. You can spritz it with water and get this. watercolor or lifting effect. Yes, it's true. Okay, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's cool. There we go. I just wanted to go over paints. You guys are going down all the rabbit holes today. Can you foil? So that's a yes and a no answer, creative touches. So yes, there are certain types of photo paper you can foil on. You have to try that out. I cannot answer that because some foil papers will take foil beautifully just in the spots that you printed. Some foil papers, the whole thing's going to foil. So they have different results depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But the answer is yes and no, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I have not done any photo paper um, foiling yet, honestly, because I don't really see a need for that. Doesn't mean I won't in the future, but you just have to experiment with it and try it out. Photo paper is not cheap, so I don't. I tend not to want to waste my photo paper, but to each his own. I try. I tend to be very frugal with my crafty crafty spending my craft supplies and I try to I try to pass on the for you guys the easiest way and the least expensive way to do something if I can that's usually because photo paper has a gloss on the top and everything will get foiled and most people don't want that it's over foiling that's why you won't see anybody doing it Nobody wants to look like a fool on camera. <laughs> I guess I'll have to try it for you guys. I'll be the guinea pig for y'all. Okay, guys. 
I'm going to call it an evening. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed the Arteza paints. Make sure you use the Arteza affiliate link and the discount code. And if you're looking for that thank you hot foil dye, please use Tracy's link at the Not Too Shabby Shop and use Tracy's 10% discount code. Um, last time I checked, it was still in stock, but it may have sold out. I'm not sure. I haven't been on there in a couple days. But thank you guys. Don't forget to join us Saturday night. If you learned something, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, click the little subscribe button and then you'll get videos and join us at the Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook. Bye guys. Thanks to my admins for being awesome. Love you all. Bye.